you are in a place where it is easy and comfortable and safe for you to do so, please close your eyes and begin to take some slow, long, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering your body and your mind. With every exhale, feel like you're able to let go and just let gravity take away all tension and anything you do not want. Inhaling peace and exhaling as you let go. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, in the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it easily and efficiently burns away everything that is not like itself, leaving us safe and pure and peaceful. Into this sacred space, we invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us here, our Creator reveals themselves to be a God and Goddess, a Mother and Father. Into this sacred space, we also invite the presence of our teachers, our guides, our angels. We ask that they join together with us here as we dedicate the time that we spend together to one another and to them. We ask that we be guided as we walk upon the way, becoming happier, more peaceful, more successful, more prosperous, more healthy, more joyous, and more loving people. Thank you very much. And if it's appropriate for you to do so out loud, please join me in saying the words, Blessed Be. Most of us in this world are struggling with at least something. And when we work with magic, the idea of magic is that we want to change things. We want there to be something in place of something else. Where there's poverty, we want prosperity. Where there's conflict, we want peace. Where there's illness, we want health. We want to have positive change occurring in our lives. And there's nothing wrong with wanting positive change to occur in our lives. In fact, it's a very noble thing to want to change things in our lives. And so you shouldn't feel bad about wanting things to be different than the way they are. It's obvious if something's painful in your body, your body is trying to alert you to the fact that there's something wrong. You don't just say, well, that's just the way it is and I better make peace with it. No, the pain is there alerting you that something needs to happen. So, the same is true with our circumstances. If there's an unwanted circumstance in our lives, oftentimes it's alerting us to the fact that there is an underlying thought form that needs to be addressed, that needs to be changed. We are inundated in this world from the very moment we're alive with all kinds of information that supports thought forms which are antithetical to the actual truth about things and the truth about ourselves and the truth about the world. And that's why we say sometimes that we live in this world of lies. It's a true thing that we live in a world of lies because what we believe isn't real. A lot of us believe that we're awful people. God didn't create awful people. God created perfect people. But we have thought forms that we're awful. And those thought forms create results in this world as if it were true. That's the thing about being a creative soul, is you have a lot of power, and we together have a lot of power, to make things seem to be something that they're not. Because thought is creative. Thought creates form. And so then we interact with those, those forms that are illusory based on false ideas, and we interact with them as if they were real, which creates an uh, even more of a dense experience of those things based on the fact that we're reinforcing those thought forms. And it's a vicious cycle. 
So when we come to something like magic, we are actually having to confront very hardened thought forms. And we have to pierce through them and let go of so much in our minds in favor of new ideas. And in magic, we do that one thought form at a time. We go through and we discover what our current sphere of influence is in any area of our life where we're having problems. And we just take one problem at a time and undo those negative thought forms and replace them with thought forms which are in alignment with the truth. Because the only thing that makes us happy is truth. If we're unhappy here, it's because of something that's not true. As we do that, we start existing in an alternate reality from other people because we are letting go of thought forms which no longer serve us that the other people that we share this space with are still experiencing. So, many times when when our problems dissolve or we have successes, people don't even understand what's going on. Some people will, will react violently when we have something good happen to us because they don't understand it. It doesn't make sense why, why I have to have so many problems and that you seem to be able to solve so many problems, right? So, be aware that as you progress farther and farther into your craft, you're going to be living in a world that seems to be one with the world that everybody else is living in, but not so much. It's an alternate reality that appears to be the same as everybody else's, but you're starting to exist on a plane that is filled with a lot more truth than what other people appear to be living in. I don't want to get in too much to that because that's not really the ultimate talk today, but I just want to kind of lay some groundwork. But before we go off of that, also, it's not your responsibility to save everybody else. It's not your responsibility to educate everybody else and and try to help them get the new thought forms and all of that. If they aren't inspired by you, then that's nothing that you can do. You don't want to get dragged back into the quicksand by trying to help people that aren't ready to be helped. So, it seems sometimes like we're being a little bit cruel when we don't do a lot to help people that are struggling. But it's not that we don't want to help them, it's just that helping them before they're ready to change their mind about what's happening, all that does is reinforce their problem and they tend to want to pull you back into where they are. And if you're just barely getting your foot in the new world, uh, it's not solid enough for you to be able to withstand somebody else pulling you back into the problem. So, sometimes you just have to let people have their problems. And I know that sounds cruel, and it's not cruel. It's just that sometimes people aren't ready to change. And when they're ready to change, they will change, and they'll be inspired by watching you change. Okay. Now, what I want to talk about, though, with all of that is... When you are experiencing change and you want to experience change, like we said, you have to undo a thought form in favor of a new thought form. Let's say your old thought form was baking soda (laughs) and your new thought form is apple cider vinegar. We know what happens when we pour that new thought form on top of the old thought form. We get a reaction, right? We get a chemical reaction. And that is sometimes, it's not always what happens, but sometimes that's what happens with magic. When we have a new thought form that is so different than the old thought form, and the old thought form hasn't been purified we will get a struggle. We will get like a little mini war of Armageddon inside of our lives where it appears that things are getting worse because of that reaction between those two thought forms. Sometimes when we are working magic, it seems like it makes things worse, but that's only temporary. If you keep at it, you keep going, 
eventually things get settled down and the new thought form takes over. Say you've made a casserole or something and it all got kind of baked onto the to the casserole dish. And what do we do? We put that to soak. We put some water, maybe some dishwashing liquid into that casserole and we let it soak. And as it soaks, that water gets really gross. And then when you go to scrub it, the water gets even grosser. But it's not that it's making it worse, it's actually cleansing it. It's getting it clean. And then you you keep rinsing it and rinsing it, and eventually it's all gone and you can put the casserole away. It's perfectly clean. Now, if we didn't understand what was happening, we would start freaking out. Oh my gosh, look at, I'm making it worse, I'm making it worse. I, I stop, stop with the water, stop with the scrubbing. <laughs> and but we know that that's not true. When we're when we're scrubbing a, a, a casserole dish, we know that that's not making it worse. It's making it better. But that's just because we have experience with scrubbing out casserole dishes, right? But a lot of times, especially at first with magic, when things seem to get worse, we say, "Oh no, what have I done?" And then we just shut everything down and we we say, "Let's just go back to status quo. This was a bad idea." When in reality, what we needed to do was keep going, keep going with it to allow that cleansing to take place and and to complete itself so that we could be done with that old thought form and that new thought form could take its place. So, what we also have, though, in the craft that will help us to avoid this sort of chemical reaction is this idea of banishing Another way of saying ban- banishing that's maybe not so archaic is purifying. Purifying our minds of the old thought form first and then installing the new thought form rather than letting the new thought form be the purification. And that way there's less of a chemical reaction between the two, the old thought form and the new thought form, because we've we've purified first, we banished first. There's an old axiom in magic is banish before you invoke. And that's exactly why. You want to clear out the old thought form, create that sort of void, and then fill that void up with the new thought form. Any kind of initiation does the same thing. You're starting to put new thought forms into your deep mind as to your function in the world. When you're initiated into the craft, you have a new function. You have this magical function that you're dedicating yourself to. And so, when you take an initiation, sometimes it seems like all hell breaks loose. It's a very common thing that happens as people start to to go down an initiatory path, and then they have the worst year of their lives. Those old thought forms are reacting to the new thought forms, just like that vinegar and the baking soda. And you keep working and practicing and working and practicing, and you clean out those old thought forms. And then by the end of that year or so, you're on a wonderful new path. But that can take a huge toll on a person to go through that kind of a reaction. So, in some initiatory paths, they do have a slowly is holy idea where they take things more gently so that you don't have those occurrences happen. Whereas other initiatory paths, they were like, well, whatever, just throw, throw the baby into the deep end and make it swim, you know. But with the, the psalmic initiatory path, it's nice and gentle. You don't usually have as much of it that goes on. If you think about it, the thought forms that we've been hanging on to and have been trained into for our whole lives, they have their own personalities. They have their own survival instinct. They're at home in your mind. They're at home in your mind and in your body, in your cells. And they are the the lens through which you see your whole world. And so, to immediately come in and, and change that, there's going to be some resistance put up because they have a survival instinct. And there's probably no way to completely go through this without some sort of a reaction. But slowly really is holy, because sometimes too much of a reaction is too much to take, and we just say, yeah, forget it. This is too hard. I'm not going to do this anymore. Another way of speaking of this sort of thing is that love is the reality. You are a creature of love. You are an extension of love. Love is not necessarily just some sort of emotion. 
love is the energy out of which you're created. So anything that doesn't look like love is not real from the point of view of spirit. It's just an illusion. But from our point of view here, it's very real. In fact, most of our reality here, and you look at experiences, there's very little love. And love is a treat here, <laughs> the exception here. From your soul's point of view, from the point of view of spirit, love is the only reality. So when you are invoking any aspect of infinite love into your life, it's going to be the purifier. It's going to bring up everything that's not like itself in order to heal you. So the more involved you get with self-love and loving other people and bringing love into your life in any form, it can seem as though it makes things worse because of that same idea of the casserole dish, because it's cleansing things out. And it's not that love is not being gentle, it's that the resistance to love is so fierce. It's that those thought forms are so violent, are so opposed to this experience of love because they know it's their demise, that those thought forms really dig their heels in and make us miserable. And so, Ultimately, what we want to do is recognize it for what it is when that happens. Love is bringing up something unlike itself, and if it's on the way up, it's on the way out. Love knows how to heal this. I've just got to go through the cleansing process, right? I've just got to go through the cleansing process. But if it's too much, it's probably because you're trying to go too far too fast. Slowly really is holy. Slowly really is holy here. And so, if you're getting too much of that reaction... You could theoretically just keep doing what you're doing, kind of go through it, and then you'll get onto the other side of it. Yes, but you don't need to do that. You don't need to go through any kind of torture in order to heal yourself. And so, when that sort of thing happens, it might be an indication that it's time for you to to go a little bit more slowly. Take your time. Be gentle with yourself and loving with yourself through this process. And that's also where it's so important that you have that relationship with your inner guidance. Because your inner guide's never going to say, okay, now just really go for it. It doesn't matter if you have that kundalini experience and everything just goes to shit. It doesn't matter. Just go for it. Your inner guide's never going to do that. Your inner guide's going to say, oh, let's pull this back. Let's go a little bit more gently. You'll get there. Don't worry. Let's just take it one little step at a time. Slowly is holy gentle is your friend. That's the urging of that inner guidance. We really do have two different voices in our heads. The voice of the ego is very loud, usually, and it's usually the first responder on any situation. If you've got a problem, the ego is usually the first one to respond and tell you what to do. Usually, the ego likes to be loud, impatient, raucous, and defensive. Whereas the inner guidance of spirit, it's a still small voice, and it wants you usually to take things slower and more gently and one little step at a time. The ego wants you to believe that pushing through things is going to get you there faster, whereas that still small voice inside of you is going to remind you that the slower you go, the faster you get there. The less you push, the faster you will get there. The ego wants you to try harder, and your inner guidance wants you to try softer. So, banish before you invoke. Always looking at that purification as your first step to just unseat some of that old thought form, and then you bring in the new thought form so that there's less of a reaction. And if there is a big reaction, sometimes it's appropriate to just let it play itself out, but a lot of times it means that you're working beyond your sphere of influence, you're trying too too hard, you're going too fast, and now it's time to listen to that inner guidance and to see if perhaps you need to pull back a little bit and not go so fast. Slowly is holy. Less is really more when it comes to magic. And a lot of times you'll get to where you want to go very quickly if you don't push yourself so hard. Your old thought forms aren't dying willingly. 
they're going to fight for their existence. That's what they do. But infinite intelligence has them outsmarted and outmatched. And if you really go with infinite intelligence's guidance, you'll get there very peacefully, very gently, and very serenely. But when you do have those chemical reactions, don't take it as a sign that things aren't working. Take it as a, an, an indication that things are working, and maybe you just need to tweak it a little bit, to pull back just a little bit, not push so hard, not lean on it quite so hard, or maybe readjust your goal and just take one smaller chunk of it at a time. You'll get there, but you don't need to get there with a lot of pain. You don't need to get there with any pain, in fact. The idea of this is to relieve you of your pain, not to increase your pain. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.